Hi, I was asked to say my name again, it, Lorenzo Xavier de Carvalho, but it was not far from what you said, it was quite well. So I, I have here the responsibility to report on the behalf of my colleagues that worked with me this morning, so I hope to be fair, and, and if I'm not, please uh, step forward. Um, so we were asked to, to design uh, a plan of action for education. Uh, we had uh, a big challenge of doing it in about half an hour uh, this morning. So uh, I think the main concepts that we came uh, to realize that should be the at the center of uh, an initiative for education would be diversity and universality. Um, and to do that, we realized that there, there should be three steps uh, to get there that reflect the most, let's say, uh, key issues that concern us. Uh, the first one is the need uh, of exposure to other uh, traditions, realities. So the constant exposure of young people, of children, uh, to different realities should be a priority. Uh, a second stage is the need to make our common grounds explicit. The universal values that we have been talking about uh, a lot of times here. Uh, in fact, I was uh, quite comfortable uh, to be in, in a place where in so many ways, different ways, we heard that uh, our common grounds are much greater than our differences. So uh, we think that uh, an educational program should have this understanding at the center. And at the third uh, stage, we think we have to relink those universal values with the diversity expression. So wh what we believe is that we should create a virtuous cycle, let's say an ascending spiral of consciousness starting from the contact with the most superficial reality of diversity and then dive into the common ground of universal values that bond together that diversity. And from then, we don't stay there at the depth. We come back to the surface and we celebrate again diversity. Um, and um, in this dialect of diversity, universality, uniqueness, and common grounds. Um, yeah, it's, it seemed to us clear that we can only be proud of our uh, diversity if we are able to be proud of our humanity. Uh, and I think that was one key point of, of, uh, uh, of this group. So we must all be believers in first place in humankind, at least as much as we are believers in our prophets, because uh, it's my understanding that when we are proud uh, to be human, in all our cognitive, uh, emotional, spiritual dimensions. I'm not only proud of my difference, of my diversity, I'm proud of your difference. Because in your difference, I, uh, together with my difference, I see, I see the whole universe. I, I see God itself. So how can I be a non-believer if I understand the depth of uh, diversity? So. Uh, we came up with a few steps to make this tangible. And the, the, the motto of our um, action plan is not to reinvent the wheel. So starting from the fact that we are here at UNESCO, invited most of us by our national commissions, we think that there's an obvious partnership uh, starting from UNESCO, national commissions, and the youth uh, personalities, the young personalities that are here and represent several NGOs and uh, different organizations. So at the core of uh, these new partnerships, these institutions should uh, be involved. And they should be involved in the first stage 
in identifying, screening, identifying, and selecting existing resources, educational resources. Again, we don't need to reinvent, reinvent the wheel. So there are a lot of resources developed by UNESCO, but also by our own organizations. So we, we should uh, capitalize that investment. Second stage, we should uh, design in detail uh, a learning program that we consider that should be uh, mainly an experiential learning program. We have seen through many of the pilot projects that were uh, shared here that there, there's an obvious advantage and for example, having retreats in nature. So we believe that outdoor retreats that connect us with nature uh, are a key point in going depth on that, those universal values to find the wealth of uh, diversity. And on another hand, this uh, experiential program should be also based on very uh, cutting edge uh, methodologies, game-based learning, um, uh, interactive uh, learning exhibitions so that we don't stay only at formal uh, learning environments but we also go to non-formal learning environments. Um, interactive 3D reality, um, virtual reality, there are many available resources uh, at our reach for that. And finally, uh, we consider that we must give capacity to the main actors of uh, the formal and non-formal uh, educational environments um, by an educator's training program. But still, here we think that it should be mostly an experiential program, also for the educators, not only teachers, policy makers, uh, youth uh, workers, etc. So, um, I, I would just end by remembering the, that we in this house the, there was it was written a report, the, the law uh, report, uh, with the co-authorship of other uh, excellent people. One of them I am proud that is uh, uh, for 20 years my longtime friend and master, uh, Roberto Carneiro. Uh, so. I, f I feel at home here. That's why probably this was the place where I heard more uh, words that are comfortable to my conscience. And in the memory of the treasure within, uh, I would say don't search it, don't search it without, like Buddha said, because will the reward for doing good be anything other than good? Quran. Thank you.